Thank you for um, uh, allowing us to, to have the opportunity to talk uh, with you all today about a, uh, a new device, uh, which is the OSEA, the cochlear OSEA system. So let me see here. Okay, so I think many of you on the call are probably uh, familiar already with um, the various bone solutions that bone conduction solutions available uh, um, in various places. Um, at Cochlear, we have some non-surgical solutions. So that being the um, wearing a, a Baja sound processor device on the soft band, uh, or also a, another um, device here, the, the sound arc. And we also have some surgical options that exist, um, including the Bahara track system, where we have a, a small implant with a magnet that is implanted on top of that. And it's connected uh, with a sound processor uh, via a magnet. So hence Bahara attract. And then we also have the Baja Connect system, which uh, also has a small uh, implant there. And you can see the abutment that is attached to that. So it's actually a percutaneous uh, solution where the abutment comes out from the skin and uh, directly connects to the, the external sound processor. Uh, but today we're going to focus on the, the new device that is available called the OSEA. So this essentially uh, consists of um, three different components, if you like. There is a, a small implant, which you would recognize from our surgical options, um, the Baja Attract and Baja Connect. So we use the same implant, the BI300 implant. There is then the new uh, implant here, the OSEA OSI200 implant. And that's coupled using the magnet um, with the OSEA2 sound processor. So overall, it looks a little bit like this. Um, once implanted, you have the implant, you have the tiny little BI300, and then the uh, processor connecting via the magnet. And also with the OSEA system, we have a number of different things available. There's the wireless accessories. Uh, it's compatible with um, Apple devices. We have a, a smart app um, and the Aqua Plus, so for people to wear in and around water and some different retention options. So uh, just to walk you through how the OSEA system actually works. Um, so again, uh, we've got the three components, the, the small implant, the OSEA implant and the processor. Um, and this animation is just showing you a little bit more about what's going to happen in terms of how it all works. So clearly the implant would be um, implanted underneath the skin. So the BI300 implant um, is in, put into the bone. It, the implants are attached on top. The processor collects all of the sound and using the digital link, uh, it transfers all of the coded sound uh, to the coil of the underlying implant, which then sends that information down to the transducer here. And this is where the real difference is. This is a piezoelectronic or, or electric, piezoelectric transducer, where the um, information comes down and causes uh, some crystalline material to make very small little vibrations. Those vibrations then go through to the uh, OSEA 300 implant. And um, then using bone conduction, it sends that information to the cochlea uh, for the person to hear sound. So it's really combining, um, I guess, bone conduction technology with piezoelectric technology and the digital link as well. So the OSEA device can really help um, people by providing a very small and thin implantable device. So because we're not using electromagnetic um, system where it can add quite a lot of bulk um, if that's to be implanted underneath um, or implanted uh, underneath the skin, um, this with the piezoelectric, because we can use the very thin um, crystalline materials, um, it allows us to have a transducer that's very small and thin. 
The other aspect that it does allow us to do is to have a device that can give us um, sufficient gain in the high frequencies. And we'll go through some, some clinical evidence there to, to show you some of the, the outcomes from some studies. And uh, the other thing is that it does have uh, removable magnetic material. So for any recipients who may need an MRI, uh, there is the option to remove the magnet, uh, which is useful. So this is the system in its entirety, if you like, and we'll talk through a little bit more detail um, around this. So as I mentioned, BI300 implant with the OSIA uh, OSI 200 implant here. Now, um, the actual OSIA implant can allow for up to 55 dB sensory neural hearing loss. Um, and the processor over here does uh, do some um, signal processing of the sound and uses that digital link to transfer the information through to the implant. So as I mentioned, it is a digital link. It's not an analog link. So um, with regards to that, the uh, digital link will either work or it doesn't work. So it's very important in terms of skin flap um, thickness or coil to coil. So the, the coil of the osseo implant and the coil of the processor really need to be um, within that 10 millimeter range to allow for really good communication of that signal. So the signal, because it's a digital signal, it will either work or not work. It won't deteriorate um, with increased um, uh, skin flap thickness. It will either be present or not present. Uh, the processor, um, it's actually very slim design, so 10.4 millimeters thick. And because we're trying to opt for a device that's discreet and um, not be too overt for, for people to wear, it comes in various colors that um, may uh, correlate more to people's hair colors. Uh, there is direct streaming available with this processor. So um, it's compatible with Apple, the MFI communication protocol that um, Apple products use. And we also have a range of wireless accessories um, such as remote microphones, TV streamers, um, and the small little phone clips. So for people using Android devices, they can connect and get some streaming wirelessly that way. Um, it also has, does come with an app. So there is the um, uh, ability for patients to uh, control the sound that they're hearing and make adjustments. Um, and uh, this can also work in conjunction with the Apple Watch for any um, uh, recipients who have uh, access to that. And in terms of uh, the IP ratings, so without the battery compartment, it is IP57 rated. With the battery compartment, it is IP52. Um, and that's purely because this uses one zinc hair battery. So um, we obviously need oxygen to get into that battery compartment to make that battery work. And so that's why um, the IP rating is a little bit lower when you can, um, include the battery compartment. Um, but if it, it does get a little bit wet, um, we're finding that most recipients can open up the battery compartment, wipe it out with a soft cloth, um, leave it to dry for a little bit, and then it's okay. For recipients who do like to swim and, and be in and around the water, uh, we do have an Aqua Plus accessory though. And when this is worn, it does make um, the processor IP68 um, in terms of ingress protection. So it increases that. Um, obviously though, when you're using the Aqua Plus accessory, you do need to use a different type of battery. So not the Zinc Air battery, because this does um, seal off uh, the processor accessing oxygen. Uh, so an alkaline or other type of battery would be needed. So now that we've looked at the processor um, and the, the implant system a little bit, we'll just uh, go through some of the candidacy information. So um, if you're familiar with the candidacy for Baja products, uh, then this will be very familiar to you. It's exactly the same. So the OSEA system is for conductive and mixed hearing loss. Um, 
So because the processor and the implant are combined, it can do up to a sensory neural loss element of 55 decibels. Um, so anyone over that, um, you may need to look at an alternative uh, hearing solution. It's also really good for when you have very big air bone gaps, so 30 decibels or more. And, you know, for using a, a, an OSEA solution or a bone conduction solution um, for recipients who have uh, this type of hearing loss, it's really useful because you're, you're bypassing that conductive loss. You're leaving that ear canal open, especially if um, somebody has uh, a discharging, actively discharging ear. Um, so there's nothing in or on the ear to um, cause any irritations there uh, and, and leaving the ear open um, so that any active infection can um, hopefully be worked through. Uh, also, OSEA can be used for single-sided deafness. So where we have um, a hearing loss in, on one side um, and the listed audiological criteria is more than 90 decibels, we do have some recipients who have slightly better hearing than that in their, their worse ear. And then in the better ear, um, having normal or close to normal hearing on that good side. So the benefits of having uh, an OSEA device in this situation is that it will help to um, improve that signal to noise ratio uh, and also enable people to hear sound from all around them. But just to again, highlight that providing an OSEA or a bone conduction solution for single-sided deafness does not give someone binaural hearing. Um, you know, it's, it's still giving every, it, it's allowing you to hear sound on that deaf side um, to be heard on the better ear, as opposed to using the auditory pathways on both sides. So in terms of the evaluation, you would do your pure tone audiometry as, as usual, looking at your unmasked bone conduction thresholds at 500, 1000, 2000 and 4000 hertz. And um, any speech audiometry that you do, for example, any hearing and noise tests. The, I guess the additional step that we would suggest um, if you're considering fitting someone with an OSEA is to also um, trial a non-surgical bone conduction solution just to see what kind of benefits um, they're reporting or if it's for pediatric recipients, um, what kind of benefits that um, the family can observe. And of course, with the air bone gap, the larger the air bone gap, um, we tend to see much um, bigger and better benefits for using an osseo or bone conduction system. Uh, for counselling, so just as you would in um, any situation, you would look at your audiological and medical indications for the use of osseo. Um, for adults, obviously, you're going to be looking at their work situation and environment. Lifestyle will definitely play a part. Um, motivation for improving uh, their situation. And uh, an important one there about trialing a bone conduction device um, to, to see how that type of amplification may work for them. Um, education and rehabilitation about the system is going to be important. And I guess in terms of this being a surgical solution, just if there's any regular or need for ongoing MRIs would definitely need to be considered. Specifically for your pediatric patients, um, with regards to this, uh, in, in Hong Kong at least, there's no uh, lower age limit. However, we do know in some areas like the US that there is a, a lower age limit. Um, primarily what you're looking for is sufficient bone thickness to put that BI300 implant in. So you need at least three millimeters. And in terms of body weight, the implant is actually coated um, in an ethylene oxide um, uh, substance. So you, you need a body weight of at least seven kilograms uh, or more to, to be able to have the, the implant system. And of course, just meeting those audiological indications mentioned previously. Normally for little ones though, you can use the non-surgical um, bone conduction solutions like a, a, a sound arc or a soft band um, in those initial stages as well. And of course, um, 
you know, for some of these recipients, they might be having further surgeries um, and things like that. So uh, they definitely need to be uh, looking at where to place the implant. Um, will they start off with a non-surgical solution and then go to a surgical solution? Um, what retention options they may need to help, if, especially if they're very active and running around, they may need to have like a little safety line or something. Um, maintaining the system and if any other accessories are needed. So lots of things to consider when you're um, uh, actually uh, counseling someone on this. So the last part of this presentation, looking at the evidence so far, um, I've picked out a couple of studies. There are certainly more, uh, more and more being published about the OSEA. Um, this is some preliminary data on a study that has been done here in Hong Kong, as well as in Australia. Um, so this is on uh, 29 patients. Um, and just to share a little bit of some of the data here, you can see the pre-op scores um, versus the post-op scores for word recognition and quiet at 50 and 65 decibels. There's clearly a significant improvement there. Um, this is preliminary data, by the way, not the final data from this particular study. Uh, in terms of um, uh, speech recognition and noise, again, you can see there's quite a, a drastic improvement um, between the preoperative scores and the postoperative scores at three months um, uh, with an average of 9.5 decibel improvement. In an earlier study that we did on OSEA, um, this one was a, this involved a, a few different countries that you can see here, um, Nijmegen, um, yeah, places in Europe, USA and Australia. Uh, what was significant about these is that we were really seeing some um, considerable gains in the high frequency areas. So when we were looking at the OSEA, which is in the royal blue purpley color here. Um, you can see when the preoperative, um, obviously quite low, but when we compared using the Baja processor on the soft band, um, the, the difference between using an OSEA, especially in the high frequencies, um, is quite considerable. So this was, um, you know, this was quite a, a nice uh, benefit to have with the OSEA. Um, this is also, so they, both of those studies I mentioned were cochlear sponsored studies. Um, there's some independent investigational research that's also been published. And similarly, we are also seeing the, that um, increase in the high frequency gain. So this is functional gain here. So um, the OSEA being um, up here is, is a, a little bit better um, than what we have when we're using the Baja 5 power. Um, and another study here, these are smaller ends, so nine and 10 patients. Um, but again, you can see that the OSEA, um, this is with hearing thresholds, again, in the high frequencies, the, um, the OSEA is outperforming um, the use of a Baja, in this case, on a Baja Connect, on a, on a surgical um, solution. So we are seeing some of those high frequency um, performance gains with this system, which is very exciting. So just to finish up, um, this is the new OSEA 2 uh, system from Cochlear, which is giving us some high power and high gain in the high frequencies. Um, it's, a, it's a, you know, a slim processor to wear using that digital link, um, combining, I guess, digital technology with piezoelectric technology uh, and bone conduction technology. Thank you very much.